Episode number 161. Guys, we really got something for everyone. And when I hear that, I just like, I want to flip the table and leave because something for everyone is kind of the kiss of death. Welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis Too Tall and Hoff, where we talk about life, dreams, social media, and business. Well, hello, and welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis Too Tall and Huff. Folks, I'm pumped up today. We're pumped because we have our featured guest, Prentiss Howe. Prentiss, are you ready to be real? Travis, I could not be more ready. I'm ready to do this. Let's do this. We're just talking about breakfast tacos, and my man's out in Austin, Texas. <laughs> He's getting me hungry right now. But Prentiss Howe uh, is the owner and the chief creative officer of Door Number 3 which has uh, fused award-winning creative talents with the passion for challenging brands to help them topple their giants, which I love. I love that. Yeah. Uh, And he has been featured in New York Times, Adweek, Communication Arts, and he's authored the Amazon best-selling book, The Empowered Challenger Playbook, How Brands Can Change the Game, Steal Market, Share, and Topple the Giants. I love that. Topple the Giants. Doesn't that sound fun? Doesn't, doesn't everybody want to do that? Let's do yeah. that. Let's go after yeah. Goliath. I like, <laughs> I like that. Uh, so my question to you is, I'm so curious, uh, door number three. I like that one because I always say yeah. door number one, door number two. That's We're choosing right. door number three, baby. Yeah. What made you come up with that idea, that name? I love that. Well, that name came up, you know, it was like a, it was a group decision uh, at one point in the agency's um, evolution, you know, and, and, and everyone kind of weighed in and there were some fun names. I remember there was one, like one person threw out the name Larry. Like, let's just call the agency Larry. We thought that's kind of funny. But then at the time we had Aaron who answered the phone. She's like, I just can't imagine saying, uh, good morning, Larry, this is Aaron. You know, just where's that going to go? Very confusing. So we had lots of, lots of great names, lots of fun names, creative things. But door number three landed on the board. And I think people harken back to, yeah, they do. I mean, it's a certain age group, but it goes back to the game show. Let's make a deal. And sure. whatever was behind door number three was kind of that element of surprise. You know what? I know what I know what I get for uh, one and two, but what's on what's behind three? So uh, we love the idea of the ele- the element of surprise. And the way we talk about it internally is give clients what they ask for, and give them what they didn't think to ask for. Got you. And so, working with clients, what type of clients do you guys tend to work with? Who who's the the type of businesses you like to work with? We love the uh, we love the the feisty clients that are they're they're rising they're scaling they're growing but they're um, I guess their ambitions kind of outweigh their marketing resources to some degree and they need an extension of their own internal marketing team uh, to help them with strategy creative media running uh, running uh, you know advertising campaigns that build the love and drive people down conversion funnels and and help them excuse me, make sales. I mean, ultimately, but the narrative thread through all of it, whether we work in clients with, in technology, financial, real estate, professional sports, you know, you name it. Uh, the narrative thread is, is really about working with challenger brands. So challenger brands, and we, 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 we like to say we help empower them, give them the roadmap to, um, to steal market share and, and get in there and, and wrestle with the big guys and, and leverage creativity, to do things that, you know, um, that, that are pretty powerful, but um, they may not have the exact resources, but I think, uh, I think creativity is a form of resourcefulness. So, yeah. That's what you guys focus on, the creative aspect. Of we the do. Idea. I think it's strategy and creative, and then it's executing it. You know, it's the marketing plans that go into it and, and being really thoughtful about that. So we're maximizing dollars. And we always say that, like, you know, we want to be an extension of your team. Like we're going to, we really got to look at it like we're spending our own money. How would we spend that? You know, yes. not just playing with with house money, but like, how would we spend it if it were our own money? And, and so, so we do media in house as well. Got you. And the world has changed. I mean, they say it's harder now than ever to be in this, uh, stay in the fortune 500. You know, yeah. I think it says like seven or eight years or someone that someone that they're around there. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, brands are coming up, so I'm sure the clients right. that you're working with are coming and taking off some of those giants. And, uh, there's so many new ideas out there. So many new business um, apps and websites. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, absolutely. No, it's, it's, it's really an exciting time. I mean, everything's getting more segmented, but I mean, audiences are getting more segmented. Yes. It's interesting. When I started in the business, it was like, come up with one idea, play it on TV or radio or do you run some outdoor or something. And I don't mean to sound like an old guy, but I've been doing this a while. And, you know, as it's evolved, it's, you know, the campaigns we're running now are, are you would know, you would know this. They're, they're just super sophisticated and they're, their audience segmentation and different messages going to different audiences and finding them in different touch points. And most of that's online. So it's, yeah, it's evolved a lot, but that's what makes it fun. 
right? A lot more yeah. challenging for business, uh, for, you know, a business. So that's why they count on companies. Like I think guys. so. No, I think it's harder for them to navigate. You know, it's like, where do you start? It's, it's, it's almost too open-ended and, um, Absolutely. that's where we can help. Yeah. And you can just waste so much money on digital advertising. I mean, I've consulted many brands as well, uh, you know, just working in social and, you know, you got, you know, once in a while you have a customer that says, Hey, you know, I spent $200,000 and I don't even know what I got. Oh yeah. I, I hate hearing that, but yeah, no, that's, that's true. That happens a lot. And I think this sounds really simple, but man, it's gotta, it's gotta start with what are we trying to achieve? You know, it's like, we're not just making stuff. We're not just spending money. Um, what are we trying to achieve? Like what's, what's going to success, what's success going to look like? And if that question's not asked from the outset, then yeah, you're dangerously close to just kind of blowing, blowing money on something that might feel good. It might get some eyeballs, but right. um, ultimately we, we're really accountable. I mean, we just, oh, we're accountable for results and you know, as we should be. So that's, that, that makes sense. And right now, what do you think right now is the, the, the go-to, if you someone was listening here and they can't afford your services, let's just say, but they're on the way up and they're working, working hard. Yeah. They got their own little brand. What yeah. do you think is the most, most, you know, an impactful place for them to spend their time or energy. That's a, that is a great question. It really is. And I've, I've been asked that in different ways throughout the years. And I, you know, I would say absolutely look inward, stand right. in front of the mirror. I don't want to I mean, stand in front of the mirror naked. I'll go ahead. I'll say it, but stand in front nice. of the naked and just kind of assess like what it's like before you start a workout regimen, like, all right, where are we at? Like, let's look at this and be very truthful about what we have, but you got to start there with positioning and brand positioning. That's differentiated and making sure that, before you spend any money on advertising and marketing and photo shoots and all these things you can do, make sure that you, you know, you, you, you uh, are absolutely in lockstep internally about what makes you different in, in why people are going to care. So I would spend a lot of time on that internally and that, that differentiation through positioning. Before you run out and with the megaphone, right? Before you go out there and, and spend all this money, make sure you know what the goal is, right? I mean, I, I was, re I'm reading recently, a, um, what matters by John Doerr. Uh, it's all about the uh, uh, OKRs, objectives oh, and key yeah. results. Yeah, yeah, I know about OKRs. Yep, key that's results, right, man. And uh, yep, really, really impactful when you really See, start to think about it. That's right. No, it's, it's you can't manage what you what you don't measure, right? I mean, you've probably heard that before, but that's it's critical. So yeah, OKRs are. I, you hear more and more about companies running those, um, you know, internally and and having accountability around those. So I think it's powerful, but you know, when it comes to advertising and what we do, uh, similarly, we, we call them KPIs, but like key performance okay. indicators. What are those things that we're, we're measuring against and reporting on and, and then making sure that we're optimizing in real time, which we can do with a lot of the stuff we're running nowadays. Yeah, that's a blessing. That's what I got into this business. I was in the broadcast TV business, ABC oh, yeah? television. Yeah. yeah. I love working there. Disney, the Disney company, uh, amazing company. But when I had one of my advertisers say, you know, how, how many people is this actually reaching? How many people yeah. are this, is this TV commercial reaching? Nothing wrong with broadcast, folks. Broadcast is still the most powerful mechanism out there, but it's the most expensive. And, yeah. you know, you can be in a print ad on Cosmo for 250000 You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're everywhere. But, like, do you need to be there? No, I mean, well stated. And I think, you know, people say broadcast is dead and TV is dead. And uh, TV and broadcast as we know it or as we knew it, uh, is, is maybe, maybe dying or limping along, but premium video is not dead. And those are still, you know, engaging commercials that say the right thing and are emotive and they're targeting the right audience. It's just, we can do a lot of that online now and find people, um, and segment audiences and hit them, you know, online and do that through, um, through Hulu and YouTube and other channels. So, um, broadcast the way we knew it is dead, but, um, that, that form of storytelling and it's not at all. I mean, it's stronger than ever. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the key. I think is that, uh, it's harder than ever to tell your story maybe because you yeah. know, brands want, don't want to spend the money to really, or maybe they just don't even think about, like you said, thinking inward and yeah. starting to figure out what this story is. They just rush to, Oh, we need to sell some more stuff. Prentice. Uh, what can you do for me? You know? And it's like, yeah, yeah, no, you're, you're right. You're right about that. And I, and we, we really try to slow it down at that point or, or they might think they might come to us and say, you know, Hey, we've, guys, we really got something for everyone. And when I hear that, I just like, I want to flip the table and leave because something for everyone is kind of the kiss of death. I think right. you really, we talk a lot about um, uh, one of the brand personalities of an empowered cha challenger brand, you know, a, a brand that's really empowered to kick ass and go out there and steal market share. One of those that you see in the marketplace with brands that are succeeding as challengers is something we call fostering rejection. 
Hmm. And foster, fostering rejection is about pushing away the masses in, in order to attract your most ardent fans. So resisting the temptation of saying, we got something for everyone. Let's just go, let's go, 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 and try to win over everyone. Instead, kill off kill off a lot of your audience and focus on your mm-hmm. biggest advocates and let them love you and help you grow the brand. And then it'll spread like wildfire. So if you see brands that are, you know, you can, you can kind of point back to their origins a lot and go, yeah, they may have a lot of, a lot of fans and a lot of type of people that love them, but they didn't start that way. They started by really being um, measured and, uh, and resisting the temptation to try to be all things to all people. I always think about Facebook, you know, yeah. uh, many, many moons ago when I first got my first Facebook uh, invite from one of my buddies in college, it was only for college students. That's right. You know, it was a very niche thing. You could only be on Facebook if you were a college student. And yeah. over the time and success of the platform, obviously now everyone can get a Facebook profile. But I think if they started that way, it might not have been as successful. So it's a really That's good a great platform. example. That is, yeah. yep, that's right. Sometimes you got to start with a very specific niche before you start doing everything. Or Uber, for instance, right now, or Lyft, or some of these platforms, they're getting into freight and they're getting into mm. all these different services that you never think. I mean, Uber Eats, let's just put it that way. Yeah. That's a, no, that's you're a, right. If they started with Uber Eats, it might not have been as successful. You know, no, but no. now it's just another piece of the puzzle. That's right. You got to nail the first thing and then move on to the next thing. It's kind of crawl, walk, run. But, you know, we, we try, to, try to coach our, our clients through that and just make sure that. You know, we're, we're biting, not biting off more than we can chew and, and then having to redo things. It's, it's really critical to, to kind of work in stages and, and build the fan base from there. My other question to you is, do you find it difficult, like rejecting clients? Like saying, it's, not good fit, you know, like, <laughs> I know it's, I know it's like the opposite of what you're supposed to do in business, but it's like, sometimes it's probably the best thing you could do is to not take that business. That's a, I love that. That's a great point of view. It's a good question. And I think you, you, you you know, you probably heard this one before, but it's like when you consider when you're saying yes to something, what is it that you're saying no to? You know, like if you're bringing something in that, that you think you need and then you, you're not allowed room in the world for things that you really should be doing. So I think I think there has to be. Uh, yeah. I mean, we, 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 we work through that and we have a lot of we have a lot of conversations, but they're not all right for us or for them. And that's fine. And, and so we do sometimes, you know, have to say this isn't the right fit for us. And, and sometimes that's after a, a lot of talking and they've kind of spilled their guts on what they need. And, and be honest, I've had a few where they get, they get mad. They get kind of mad. They're like, right. well, what do you mean? Right. You know, wh- why are we not right? And it's typical, the typical, like that we want what we don't have. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But you know, you know, in the end, I'm sure they figure out why we determined it wasn't the right fit and that's fair. And like, let's figure that out early rather than uh, two months into the relationship. So it's, right. um, I think it's, I think it's healthy, but we have to do that for sure. And then also I'm getting into your book because yeah. uh, the Empowered Challenger Playbook. I yeah. like how brands can change the game. What made you write this book? I mean, I know it kind of goes along with your, the theme of your, of your agency, but how, first yeah. off, how did you get the time to write the book? I, I don't know. That's a great question. I think about that now because I wrote that and, you know, time has passed and I thought, well, it's probably time to write another one. And then I, and then I you know, start, start to ramp up for that and I go, how the heck did I find time to get that done? I, right. you know, I, I don't know, but I had a good editor. I had, you know, I had some good infrastructure in place to, but, but um, yeah, no, I mean, I was focused. It was kind of my one thing for a while, so I got it done. But the reason for doing it is um, like any brand that's out there is really being clear about who you are and who you want to attract and what you stand for. And so just really fortifying our brand as an advertising agency and saying, this is our point of view. This is what we focus on. These are the clients we help. And this is what we do really well. Mm. And so I wanted to write something that hopefully wasn't too much about us. There's some examples of things we've done in there. But for the most part, I wanted somebody, you know, whether you're, whether you're a startup, which, you know, we don't work with a lot of startups, but you know, if you're a startup and getting things going, or you're more of an established brand, or you're leading a big company, and you just don't think marketing's been figured out, it's, it's an easy read and able to hopefully go through and get I want it to be useful and be helpful and something that people can kind of pick up and go, okay, I get the process. I get that positioning's critical. I see the personalities of empowered challenger brands. I see myself in there and then, you know, walk people through some mental exercises throughout the book to get them kind of thinking about what their place is in the world. So that was the reason for doing it, really trying to put something useful out into the world that I hopefully marketers at any life cycle would, would find value in. 
Yeah, and they say now like the, the a book is like your best business card, kind of like a podcast. Yeah, you know? it's, it's like an it's another form of business. business. Yeah, oversized business card, right? Isn't that what it is? Build I guess some so. More yeah, credibility and build you more. <laughs> uh, you know, help people at the end of the day. I mean, obviously, maybe someone can't afford your brand, but they can get the 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 uh, in, insights. Uh, you know, on their own. You know what? Yeah, you know, and I'll speak truthfully because you know people will be like, "Oh, you wrote a book," and and that's it's it's an accomplishment. It is great. Yes, but truthfully, the best way to learn something is to write about it. And and it's funny because you know when that that book didn't just all of a sudden plop down like you know it, here it is and it, a lot of that you know it took research and actually you learn things along the way in putting putting pen to paper so it, i got a lot out of it too and it's it's um it's a process that i think is really valuable um for the writer and for you know whoever's behind it to just kind of stretch themselves a little bit so that, that was good for me so for those that are out there don't be afraid let's write a book no don't be afraid because you know what i didn't when you start a book you don't have all you don't have all the content and all the answers and it, it's a lot of uh, figuring things out and bridging the gaps between things that you do know, but, um, it's a good journey. And it's something you don't have to do. So yeah. it's like, it's like that extra yeah. acumen to your day. Like you said, you're probably already busy the other day. I mean, I'm sure those days you were busy, but you still figure, figured a way out to get it done. Yeah, that's uh, right. That's right. You can look back and say, wow, how the heck did I do that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it was something that big that you start out. I mean, it, what's always the most useful thing for me is start out with the why, why am I doing this? What What's the outcome look like? Why Why am I doing it? And and if you keep that in mind throughout the process, it kind of makes it uh, less labor intensive. You know, keep the eye, That's eye the on the motivational fuel. The motivational fuel is going for you. Yeah, right. Does that make sense? I mean, I think absolutely. That, with, with anything you're doing, working out or or starting a book, you know, so or recording a podcast or right? recording a podcast. Yes, I think about that every day. Like, why am I doing this again? Why? why? Yeah, I, yeah. I yeah. love what's... to meet new people. For one, that's why I yeah. did it because yeah, I, I can tell that's. Absolutely. Meeting new people around the world. And then I was able to interview some of my heroes or people that I looked at in marketing and, uh, and business. Um, and then recently, like maybe a few months ago, we were, uh, I was watching a book, with Kai Fu Lee, who is the president of Google China, really, you know, tech giant venture capital. And I was thinking to myself, I'll probably never get this guy on the podcast, but I'm going to tweet it. There you go. And you know, I tweeted him and next thing you know, he's like, Hey, I can, I can do it on Saturday. And it's like, Whoa. You know, I mean, for part, you. part yeah. of it is just, you know, the, the excitement of, of the unknown, you know, you're like, oh, I'm going to do this and see yeah. what comes from it. You don't necessarily know what the, what the outcome is going to be, but you got to try. You know? Right. Uh, so right yeah. now, what is one of your biggest challenges? What is something that you are having a challenge with right now? This 2019, as you guys are a oh. challenger brand too, right? Compared yeah, to of maybe course. some of the other bigger agencies out there and you're taking some of their, uh, you know, some of their cream of their cookies right here, you know, taking some of their. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, smaller for them. We're not immune to all this stuff. I mean, all these challenges are within our, our company and in other companies. We're essentially we do a lot of brand positioning projects, and mm -hmm. that means going in and interviewing stakeholders at companies and um, identifying what's going on. What are the what are the challenges? What are the weaknesses? Where are the blind spots? What's broken? And man, whether we go into a tech company or uh, you know a beverage company or you name it, um, a nonprofit, you realize that everyone's got some pretty massive things going on that need to be fixed. Right. And, you know, you just got to look at it as an opportunity. There's not no reason to, you know, take your ball and go home. These are, these are things that can be addressed and fixed. But I mean, for us, it's, it's always going to be probably um, growing pains of some kind, you know, it's the right people in the right roles all the time. Um, making sure processes are improving and, you know, workflow processes and things like that. But, you know, in, in, you know, I think that's something that I'm always going to keep an eye on and, and focus on is just growing the right way and making sure that we're, um, we're graduating to a more professional level at every stage, you know? And so I think that, um, operationally, you know, my background's in creative. So, um, you know, I grew up as a writer and working at ad agencies around the country as a creative director and doing that. So I'm in a new, relatively new role, um, as a owner of the agency, uh, I've been doing that specifically. I've had the agency for just over four years and with that brings exciting new challenges. But I, I, uh, I love being around my team and making sure that they have what they need. And, and so I try to focus on that as much as possible, but that's always the challenge and something that needs to be worked on daily. Yeah. There's like no right answer. It's like one of those things. There's so many things you could do tomorrow. Well, that's right. To grow. No, I mean, I think we all struggle with that, right? That's always a challenge because everything's important. I mean, it's all, culture's important. The work going out the door is important. Financials are important. HR right. stuff, you know, there's just, there's a lot of things that, and they all matter. So it, it's, um, 
yeah, it's always a, a lesson in prior, prioritization. And it's all on you, right? That, 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 at the end of the day, when you're the owner, it's all on you. You're you stressing know? me out, man. You're stressing me out. No, <laughs> yeah, um, of course. Of course. It's yes. I us, take that, you know? yeah. yeah, of course it is. I take that home with me every night. And I, you know, um, but, but, you know, it's all on me, but it's, it's not really. I mean, I, I, you know, when you, when you surround yourself with a great people, great talent, great team, right. I've, you know, it took me a little while to figure it out, but I, I think I've totally figured it out by now is, is people are everything in our business, everything, oh, yeah. you know? Absolutely. So, and I've got, I've got great people. So it's on all of us. Shout out to you, my man. Shout out to you. So we're now about to take you into our top 10. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. Let's do it. Apple or Android? Apple. Okay. Okay. Netflix or YouTube? I'm going to go Netflix, although they need more options online, but I'm still going to go Netflix. Netflix. Instagram or Twitter? 100% Instagram. Instagram. It's pretty much dominating everything in social now. Chicken steak or fish? Mm, chicken. Chicken. Nice. Laptop or iPhone? Oh, iPhone. iPhone. Yes. Spotify or Pandora? Absolutely Spotify. Nice. Movies or video games? Oh man, I love video games, but they suck me in too much. I had to give them up. Like too much uh, time, huh? They're no, just... it's it's movies all the way. Six hours later, you're like, oh, what? yeah. No, <laughs> I, I had to put it down. Yeah, no, some <laughs> movies. Reading books or listening to books? I do it both, but I'm gonna pick reading books. And I even go old school and will hold a printed paper book. If you've heard of one of those, oh, yeah, they still absolutely. make them. You can get them in a bookstore. But yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go books and holding a, an old school book. Nothing like hearing the pages turn. Absolutely. One of my favorite things too about having a physical book is after you read it, you can share it with someone else. Yes, that's right. As a gift, you know, hey, here's a gift. Stocks, crypto, or real estate? Oh man, I'm going to go real estate. Yeah. Real estate, the real deal. Getting that money, reoccurring. <laughs> oceans or lakes? Oceans, 100%. I love it. What, do you have a favorite ocean? Well, the Atlantic. I, I'm, Atlantic. I'm originally from New England when I was a kid, so oh, I just yeah. love New England coastlines and being up there. It's great. Absolutely. So now we have a couple more follow-up questions. When you wake up in the morning, you're brushing your teeth, you're getting ready for the day. Why do you love being you? Oh, I'm all I've got, man. You got to love being you. You know, that's, that's what you've got. So I, I appreciate, I appreciate and, and find gratitude in, in what I've been blessed to, to have, which is my health and my family and, and all that. If I can appreciate that every day, I'm going to be super happy to be me that's all I good. That. I love that, man. Yeah. I mean, too, I think too often too, with social media and some of these other things, uh, people want to be someone else. Yeah. You know, and it's like, dude, just be you. Yeah. You know, just be you. There's right? only one you. I mean, come on. Yeah. There's, you're right. There's 5 million Kylie Jenner's out there, but there's one you, you know, <laughs> that's I right. mean, how do you typically like to start your day? Do you have a flow? Do you have something you get going and how Yes. So, I mean, my ideal start to the day is, uh, this is nuts, but I finally, you know, I figured it out. I wake up at 4.30. I go to Orange Theory, do a five o'clock oh, yeah. class. So I'm done by six. I'm home by like 6.05. And then I can get my girls up and get things started for the day. So that's the perfect morning that sets me off on a good path. Yeah, there's nothing like, because I'm a new dad. Actually, I have a 56-day-old little girl. So oh, I'm just wow. learning. I'm just learning, Prentice. I'm just learning. Well, uh, there's no, yeah, there's, yeah it's, it, it's, it's on the job learning at Oldsville. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you just throw out your uh, priorities for your child, obviously. And uh, I know this, the gym is so important uh, as yeah. a business owner. Yeah. When I get that, when I get that great energy in the morning, a hard workout, some blood flow, sweat, I like to take a cold shower. Yep. I'm up and then I'm like, I can do anything, you know? And it's like those days like today, yeah. even I didn't get a chance to go to the gym. I'm just dragging just a little bit where I'm just like, where's yeah. the coffee? Where's the caffeine? You know? And it's so important for us entrepreneurs out there to do something, you know. Even well, if, you never regret working out, do you? You never regret having those endorphins. I mean, no. it's it's incredible. So it's it's not easy to do, but uh, yeah, never never say, man, I shouldn't have done that today. Right. That's the one that it's like, man, thank God I did it. <laughs> yeah. Orange Theory, man, that's a really cool business. I mean, they've done really well. Uh, I'm a fan. I think it's a smart business, and I can see why they were so, so successful. It's it's a going back again, going back to seeing progress and, and be able to measure something not just kind of wondering am i getting better am i getting right faster? am i getting stronger you can see it and seeing things on a dashboard it's it's pretty mm. cool yeah and also they they uh i love rowing and i, I think they're yeah. really heavy into rowing too that's yeah awesome. that's right um is there a skill right now in 2019 that you want to master oh 100 percent. so i want to learn how to play the drums that's Ooh, my thing. nice so I, I i've played guitar all my life and i love guitar but at some point i said i want to learn how to play the drums and so um 
created an action plan and that, that involved uh, ordering a drum kit and having it show up. And my wife did not know this was coming. So I heard <laughs> someone yelling at me from the front door and saying, what in the, you know, there were some words that were used. Uh, that's um, classic. Said, yeah, we're going to set that up today. So she, she's a sweet, sweet wife and she helped me set it up. And now I'm taking lessons every Saturday and oh, that's awesome. I intend to learn the drums this year. It's just one of those things I'm going to, give myself as a gift and allow myself to just kind of do something that's kind of just for me. So, yeah, absolutely. Music is a very uh, special gift, you know, yeah. even if it's just for you, you know, a lot right. of people think music is like, I got to go record in the studio. I got to get put out an album. Yes. And a lot of times it's not that it's just the, the practice of playing. I like you saying that. And I had to get over that. Cause I, you know, I was challenged myself on that. I said, why am I doing, I'm not going to plot. I'm not trying to join a band or something. Right. And then I finally got over that and thought it's not about that. It's about, the enjoyment of it and what you get out of it by doing it. So yeah, it's, it's like almost like the gym. It's like, you don't get really too many accolades. I mean, yeah, someone might say, Hey, you look good, you know, but outside of that, it's just for yourself. You yeah. Know? So music is, I love that about music. I even, I produce music myself. And so sometimes you get nice. caught up in, you know, wanting to, to, to be the next big thing, you know, and sometimes it just doesn't happen, you know? And so you got to right. do music or hobbies are really for yourself first. Yeah. That's, that's right. the most important thing. And, um, do you have a favorite app or a tool you like using on a daily basis? Oh man, Google Drive. And I mean, that's the most boring answer oh, I know. No, but I man, that. that app is just like, it just keeps everything uh, in real time and accessible. And so yes. uh, once I finally adopted it and got the, got the Google Sheets and the Google Docs and all that in there, it's, it's awesome. And it's easy for teams to collaborate, right? Yeah, like it is. Multiple team members collaborate on the same document. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Such a yawner. I should have given you no, some I love cool travel app, but that, I'd say Google Drive is pretty critical. It's very useful too. I mean, shout out to Google for making it free. I mean, it's yeah. awesome. Uh, if you could sit down, be real right now, tonight for dinner with anyone in the world, who would it be? Oh man, I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead of the secret service. If, Ooh, if, nice. if he will talk, if he'll talk, if right. I want to have dinner with him, if he's not going to tell me much, it, no, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But if he'll talk, that's who I want to have dinner with. I've always been fascinated wow. by the secret service. I just think it's the coolest thing ever. Air force one. I want to know what's going on. Right. Uh, I want to know. I want to know lots of stuff. So I the I'd, stories they're not telling us. <laughs> yeah. I just think it's a fascinating job. So that would be uh that would be a dinner I'd love to have. And it, I love getting into a world I don't know anything about. And so that would be, that'd be pretty cool. I know that'd be intriguing, actually. Yeah, Secret Service, CIA, DAA. Uh, yeah, gotta just be so many different untold stories of stuff that we've never has never come made out in the media for obviously because they probably control it. Uh, exactly. You know, and so it's very interesting. Um, what is it? Could you have a book that has changed your life or changed your mindset? Man, there's a couple. So I, I guess you know, early on, it was it was a, a book you may or may not remember called Catcher in the Rye. So it's oh fun. yeah, but Catcher in the Rye, like when I read that as a young kid. I just, it kind of opened my eyes and I was like, wow, writing is cool. Like I, you know, right. It kind of got me into the written wor word and, um, and, and I chased writing after that. Um, not immediately, but it's a book I always come back to and it reminds me of kind of finding my interest in, in writing and, mm -hmm. and that pursuing that as a career. So I'm going to go with that just because it's had, I think the biggest impact over the course of my life. Uh, that will be it. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And it's also, uh, definitely gave you that inspiration to be where you're at today probably maybe that book one simple book might have yeah no i think it was on that path it was kind of a pivotal moment where i thought yeah exactly opened up those creative juices right uh, at the end of a long day you worked hard you got lots of good things going for your clients and brands and team do you have a favorite show or something to do with the fam at night you know what uh I, I don't watch a ton of TV really, but you know, my favorite thing is when I'm, when I'm home at night, I love, I love hanging out with my wife and my two girls. So I have two nice. girls they are 10 and nine and you know, we could be in the backyard playing ball with the dog or we could be playing an old school board game at the dining room table or something. But I, I just, that time with them is incredible. And I'll tell you as a new dad, the coolest thing about it is living vicariously through them and getting to relive your childhood because yes. every month, every year, their world is changing and they're telling me something that they've discovered. And it is just the coolest thing ever to kind of walk through that again now as an adult and just right. with the perspective that you have. So, I, yeah. you know, it's family time's the best. That's, that's my favorite thing. Family time is everything really at the end of the day, you know, yeah. especially uh, in this world because you only have one life. So you yeah. be with the ones you love. Yeah. That's uh, right. Can you give our listeners one last real talk thought about their brand, about life? 
Oh man, embrace your challenger ability. That's not a real word, but we use it. Your challenger ability. Like, you know, being a challenger is, you know, is the coolest thing ever. You know, whether you're a brand or, or anything in your personal life, you can really kind of see yourself as that and embrace it and go, man, there is some beauty in constraints and there's beauty in being boxed in a little bit. It, it, at least you know where the walls are and you know where the boundaries are and you know what to push up against. So um, I think that's pretty cool. And I think that if you can just embrace it, um, you, you'll do big things. And we've seen it time and time again with brands and people and the little engine that could, doesn't matter. You know, um, it's, it's a really cool place to be, especially in today's economy. Well, folks, you've been hanging out with Prentice Howe and Travis Tutalan Huff. I want to thank you again for your time today. And let's keep being real. What another epic episode. And uh, if you enjoyed the episode today, can you please do me a favor and subscribe to our podcast, The B-Real Show, on iTunes or your favorite podcast platform. And also take a little time today, if you don't mind, and give your boy T-Huff a review. I would really super appreciate it. And thank you so much for listening today.